Good morning and welcome back to Ubrint Studio. My name is Anita and today I'm going to show you how I embellish using beads. I'm going to show you this piece that I've actually got on the go at the moment. This is what I'm working on. That side of it's finished and I'm working on this piece here. The materials that I'm using are this is uh, Japanese paper, it's beautiful, you can wet it, you can stitch into it, you can do all sorts of things with it. I have uh, pre-painted it and then I've stamped it, some of you may recognise those stamps. Um, and now it's nice and dry, it's very soft, very much like a fabric. Then I have painted some of this, so this is a bark. I'm sure many of you recognise it. Um, mulberry bark is its name and you can paint that too. So here's a piece that's been painted. I haven't done anything with it yet. It's just painted as you can see. You can stretch it and manipulate it whichever way you want to either when it's wet or when it's dry. It doesn't really matter but you do get these beautiful lines on it because it's a natural product. It makes it perfect for the sort of textile art that I love to do, which is embellishing it after I've layered it and using beads. One of my favorite beads are these. These are seed beads. One of these days I'll get this camera right. There we go. I'll bring it back so that they come into focus. I hope you can see them. There are three colours in this particular one. There is a, a very light brown, a very dark brown, and an emerald green, which for me works beautiful on this piece that I'm doing. Now, many people will tell you that when you're beading, you can thread three or four beads onto your beading needle um, and just stitch them down. I like to stitch each individual bead down, but that's just me probably being a bit fussy. Beading needles come in all different shapes and sizes. They are very long, very thin, can you see that? And very fine, which is what they have to be to go through the beads. Thread-wise, I don't use beading threads. I use um, polyester. So this is a variegated polyester. I absolutely love variegated threads. This particular one quite sure if you can see that. Um, comes in various colours, lots of different colours, lots of different shades um, and they never ever look the way you think they're going to look on uh, your fabric once you start stitching with them. So give them a try, whichever brand you use it doesn't matter but variegated threads are worth it. So uh, just take a length of thread and find out where you've put your scissors. Thread your beading needle. If you hold it against a white background you'll find it's easier to see. We're going to be using the single length of thread and now I'm going to adjust the camera so that you can see what I'm doing. I have tipped some of the beads out and I'm using a white plastic background to make it easier for you to see. So if you could just bear with me while I adjust this. Not very good at doing this, isn't it? Really useless, really. However, hopefully. I get it right, she says, hopefully. Okay, so here are my beads. This is the piece that I'm working on. And here is my needle threaded. What I want to show you is how I'm following the lines on this piece and at the moment I'm working along this outside edge 
and all I will continue to do is come along here to sew this down onto this paper background. Then I will work along each of these lines as they're going. You can already see that there is a pattern there. As on this piece here, we're just following the natural lines. And that piece looked like that one before it started. And then as the beads go on, the whole piece changes completely. I don't worry about my back sewing at the back. It's not the neatest, but then it's going to be put onto something else. So really, it doesn't matter. So I'm going to secure my thread from the back. And I've just managed to unthread the needle, which isn't very clever, is it? Okay, just re-thread that. Just a couple of stitches to secure it into place. One of them I will go through the loop so it makes a knot. And now I'm ready to come up to the front. And at this stage I don't worry about how things are looking because Can improve it later. Okay, so to pick up your bead, you pick it up with the needle. You just push the needle through and using your finger slide it on and then stitch. I'm not planning where the colours are going or how they're going on. I'm just literally stitching this through. Be careful not to let it get caught. And just pick up your beads randomly, one at a time, following this outside edge. And at any point, if I feel that I want to come in, from the very edge I will do. And I am stab stitching. And the reason for that is it gives me more control. So I'm coming up. Picking up a bead and going back in. And then pulling it tight. I have not tacked this piece. This is not tacked down. And that's because I'm too lazy. And I don't want to waste any thread. It's something that's going to have to come out. I don't tack anything. If I can help it, I avoid it like the plague. I just think it's a waste of time. I'm quite happy if this moves. I'm quite happy about it growing the way it wants to grow. I'm quite happy about the organ organic side of things. So as you can see at the moment, I've come across, if you could see that, so this, um, perhaps I'll turn it that way, this area that I'm working here, you see there's a, a hole here, so I'm going to work round it, which will bring that colour through from the background. Still stab stitching. I'm going to go with some of the darker ones now. Just randomly stitching around this. Because the beads are what brings it alive. I don't count the beads, I just stick them on. 
if I feel that I need to put something more there, then I will add extra beads, but from the same pot, the same colours. And there are a number of questions that people ask me when I'm doing this. One is, how do you know you've got enough beads? I never know if I've got enough beads. Um, and I quite often run out of beads and have to go looking for them because I won't know where I've bought these from. I never remember. I buy, think, buy beads when I see them because I like the look of them. I don't buy them for specific projects. I like the randomness of that. I haven't used too many of the emerald ones in this piece because I don't want them to overtake it. But when I do use them, I use them in odd numbers. So it will be one, three or five. Um, I think they look better that way. Not necessarily all in a straight line. Sometimes they may be bunched up. So it looks like a little jewel. Now, if you can see, I have just put three there. And then I'm coming back round here to continue working around this hole. The paints that I have used on here are acrylic. Nothing special. They are a good quality acrylic though. System 3 I buy. They're very nice. They work very well with most fabrics, especially if you add a fabric medium to them. There we go. So I'm just coming down now. Because there is a line there. I'm not quite sure if you can see that line that I'm following. So there is a line that comes down here, which will meet back up with these. Again, too much about which beads I'm picking up. I do tend to find sometimes that you're picking up the same beads over and over again, and in those circumstances, I deliberately change. I look to see what I've got and change it. And again, I try not to have things in even numbers, it's odds. So as I'm sewing them on, it will be ones, threes or fives. Many of you may be thinking, why isn't she using a beading mat? Why hasn't she planned this out? Um, I don't plan anything, I just sew. I don't like planning tedious. So there is another line here that's coming through here and at this stage I'm not worried about whether I'm going up or down or across. I'm just letting the lines appear as I see them and I follow them. You can always join them up at some other point as you're sewing. And that is how I enjoy stitching. Particularly love adding beads onto things because I find it quite therapeutic. So I've just put this last one on here and show you how that's changed that bit. And this piece will eventually end up as a vessel. Thank you for watching. <laughs>